Okay, so listen, dwarves are cool as hell. They're grumpy, they have beards, they have no word for forgiveness, and they love both beer and metal. But I'm willing to admit that from a strictly aesthetic perspective, they're kind of boring. If you don't believe me, consider this. Between Warhammer's 7th and 8th editions, Games Workshop started introducing big centerpiece units. Impressive models that ushered in the company's current golden age of miniature sculpting, but also served as prestige pieces for collectors. The Arachnorok Spider, the Tomb King Sphinxes, the Ogre Thundertusk and Stonehorn, these are just some of many examples. But the Dwarves never really got one. The closest they came, until Age of Sigmar that is, but we don't talk about that, was the updated Gyrocopter and Gyro Bomber. And as cool as they are, they don't exactly have the charisma of, say, a dragon. Let alone a dragon with two heads. So you might say that in updating the Gyrocopter and Gyro Bomber for Total War, developer Creative Assembly had its work cut out in bringing some pizzazz to what is, after all, a lump of implausibly airborne metal but they gave it a damn good go, and they start in the Dwarf Reveal trailer for Total War Warhammer, where a gyrocopter features prominently. Realising he's about to be ambushed, the copter's pilot is in a frantic rush to get his vehicle started. In this, one of the first trailers Creative Assembly released for the game, the copter is as much a character as its would-be pilot. And so the rotors spin up into action, but there's a clunk somewhere deep within the engine, and it powers down again with a whine. Like so much of what passes for technology in the old world, the gyrocopter has an experimental Age of Invention vibe. It can't be relied upon, only persuaded. But how does one go about depicting that negotiation? This is fictional machinery after all, based on a tabletop model. How did Creative Assembly even know where, say, the starting motor was? I think most of the time, like um, the models are detailed enough <clears throat> to be able to give us most of the stuff. I think there's a few times in which we've had to ask about certain changes because we couldn't get it to move with certain things or it just completely intersect. But I don't think that happens too much. I think we're normally quite inventive yeah. with the artists about that. On the cinematic side of things, Games Workshop gives us quite a bit of freedom. I think yeah. it's, it's mainly on the characters in terms of the way they look. Yeah. Uh, and the way the environment might look. Um, but in terms of the cinematic stuff, I think they just, they give us quite a lot of free yeah. reign. Yeah. So we've, yeah, well, we'll take a model and then we'll look at how it, how we imagine it should work based on whether it's a, a mechanism or, or hydraulics or something like that. And then even a mix between cloth or, or bone or skin. And then we'll try to rig it and skin it in a way that makes sense and try and automate whatever we can. So to achieve this level of detail for the cinematic, the team at Creative Assembly had to build a brand new animation rig for the gyrocopter to show more of its mechanical parts in motion, and indeed for the pilot to show the raw panic in his face. We kind of repurpose that a lot in cinematic heads as well, so if you've got a cinematic trailer, well, I think you create like a new rig for it, uh, for the head, and then that way you can get more expressive emotion in the face, which there's no point having in the game because you never really get that close yeah. to a character. Uh, for most of the characters in game, we try and sculpt some of that into the face. So if you look at a high elf versus a dark elf, for example, you've got like a, a furrow in the brow of a dark elf, whereas a high elf has got more of a, a regal royal face to them. Um, whereas in the cinematic, you can exaggerate both just by pushing and pulling the form around. We normally uh, try and do a couple of cinematic face rigs uh, per trailer, depending on their requirements. And that's normally we'll uh, take the existing game model, we'll work out whether we can use it or not, whether it's got enough uh, fidelity in there. And that may go through to an artist to create a cinematic version, which is just a high density, it's more detail uh, and textures and so on and so forth. On the battlefield, you can really sense this unreliability in things like the sputtering of the engine noise. But as flying units in the first Total War Warhammer, gyrocopters pose Creative Assembly a number of brand new challenges. Perhaps most notably, how do you get flying units to interact with the ground and with each other? And think about like yeah. the ground plane, for example, for collisions or things like that you need to take into account. And even thought processes, okay, do we want things to collide differently in, in the air? And then how do we go about that? Yeah. And then going through the whole iterative process of um, testing. So we get, you get animators to go through and test that process, try animations, go through to programmers, try and fix the bugs and having that gone in the background. But that was, it was uh, definitely worth 
it for the results. Yeah, definitely, because we've got to think of the kind of the attack animations when they're flying against other flying units, yeah. and then how they deal with kind of other ground units. Um, so the gyrocopter then is like, yeah. So how does a gyrocopter <laughs> kind of attack other units and things, yeah. kind of thing? So you had to kind of like, well, they'll just go down, they'll start using the propellers and trying to kind of <laughs> like, a, like a mad lawnmower and try and kind of chop them down, whatever. Yeah. Um, and you know, and kind of with the, obviously gyro bombers, obviously will just do the uh, throw their bombs and yeah. things. Um, but even then, counting the number of bombs that they have to drop yes. and and tying it up with visually what they have using existing system existing systems wherever possible. Um, just so then we can focus on, on like the, the more challenging tasks. Working through headaches like these resulted in sights you can only see in Total War Warhammer. Sights like a gyrocopter tipping forwards as it descends to hack at grounded enemies with its rotors, like a mad lawnmower. From an animation point of view, they're kind of really quite simplistic because all they do is kind of flying around and that's it. They're not kind of organic. You don't have to really worry about idols or, you know, they got to attack animations. It was kind of like, well, it's just like, they just use, go down and start mowing people. Yeah. So it's the same kind of, so the animations were quite simplistic in that yeah. sense. It's just kind of the, the blades going around and that kind of juddering, because you want to get, get that emphasis, like it's kind of, crazy technology, it's obviously it's not like a modern helicopter where it'd be kind of perfect and things, you want to get that kind boring, of sense, you know? yeah, yeah, so you want to get a sense of like they're struggling with the technology a little bit there, it's not kind of perfect, so we're trying to get that kind of shaking, kind of, it's, like a st it's, it's powered by steam, so, but you still want to get that kind of crazy kind of, you know, mechanics going on and stuff. Yeah. It was also very tricky to convey the sense of temperamental technology, which that early cinematic had captured so well. The trailer concludes with the dwarves beating back the marauding greenskins and a squadron of fully functioning gyrocopters strafing the enemy lines. Something that's always bothered me though. Clearly those bulky cockpits are not aerodynamic. A steam-powered engine would be far too weak, heavy and inefficient to spin those rotors rapidly enough and the rotors are too short. So I have to ask, how exactly does a gyrocopter fly? <laughs> magic. Yeah, it's, all, exactly. it's all magic. It's one of the benefits yeah. of working in Warhammer. Yeah. Everything is magic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> magic and steam power. <laughs> they must be talking about runic magic, since as I'm sure they and you know, dwarves can't use wild magic and wouldn't want to. So now you know how a gyrocopter flies, and if you found that piece of insight helpful or you learned something else in this video, give us a like and subscribe to PC Games N. We've got lots more Total War unit spotlights and other videos coming soon. I mean it this time, this isn't like that series I tried to do. <laughs> Until we see you next time, uh, thanks for watching and take care.